and if I go into the reports, I don't think they have any budget reports at this time. So if I was to search for a budget, there's nothing there because they haven't set one up. So let's go through the process of just setting up the budget and then look at the reports that would be in place. Now note, when setting up the budget, it's not something that you're typically going to want to do just solely in QuickBooks usually. What you're going to want to do is export the data from QuickBooks, possibly from the prior year, I would say to Excel and then calculate your budget and make changes about what you think is going to happen in the future. And then I would go back in and import the budget that you have created back into QuickBooks. Why? Because QuickBooks has those reports, especially the budget versus actual comparative type reports. And that's what QuickBooks is going to be quite useful for. So for example, we have our two forms up top, a balance sheet and an income statement. Normally, when we're first thinking about a budget, we're thinking about the performance statement. That's going to be the income statement. So when I'm thinking about what's going to happen into the future, we're trying to think about performance. Oftentimes, it's kind of like if you were trying to see how far you can drive your car in a day, you could say, OK, this is how far I drove my car in the prior period. In this case, the last year, meaning the income accounts are going up over that time frame. And then you're going to reset the odometer and say, OK, what's going to happen? next time if I set the odometer back to zero and I drive it for another day or another year, how far am I going to get? Your first thought would be, well, you're going to get about the same distance unless you change stuff. In this case, you're going to change stuff possibly like the budgeting, possibly the economic environment is different and so on and so forth. So your starting point will typically be the prior year's profit and loss. So your starting point might be to export this profit and loss. And we'll talk about this a lot more in a budgeting section or course in the future. But just to get a general idea, you might export, say, this profit and loss to Excel, or you might break it out on a month by month basis. And I can run it this way and then break out your information on a month by month basis uh, to Excel to get a little bit more detailed or else you can just take the totals and basically divide them by 12 as kind of like your starting point and then and then adjust make your changes from there in excel and then take that information from excel and populate it back into the quickbooks system so that quickbooks can then run reports as actual time passes to compare what actually happened to what happened in the budget okay so that said let's go to the tab to the right now also note you, you could do a budget for the balance sheet as well but QuickBooks doesn't have as much capacity to do the budget for the balance sheet. The balance sheet would be where you're going to stand at the end of the of another year, for example. So if this was our, our where we stood as of this point in time, December 31st, 2022, and then we decided that, that we used this information to budget what we're going to do in 2023, then I can think about where my balance sheet would be. Where would we stand at the end of 2023? And we can also think about that on a monthly basis. To, to make those projections is a little bit more complex on the balance sheet side of things to, 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 uh, to, to actually fill out the balance sheet. There's multiple ways that you can think about doing that. Uh, but we, we won't dive into that in detail. We're typically thinking about our performance statement, the income statement in here when we're doing our QuickBooks budgets.